it's Friday, and we are live and alive and loud. Is yeah. this loud enough? Was that too loud? Yeah, a little loud. Oops. This is Ari, the Data Queen, joined by Analyst Holt, Matt Muscardi, Hazel Nout Rollins, and Chantal. Intern Chantal. Intern. intern. Oh, sorry. Did Not you call her Chantarelle? <laughs> Chantrell, like the mushroom. Chantern. Mm. Oh, no, can't do it. Delicious, delicious mushrooms. On today's weekly wrap up, we got Kamala, 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 maybe some Musk. I think some Boeing. Yeah, there is that. But are we Always feeling better Boeing. this week than last week? Last week was a was pretty low, I think. Well, let's just say this. I don't know what Chantal pulled this week. I'm guessing 45 stories about Kamala Harris. <laughs> um, but I know it was not easy to find assholes. Okay. And you have four goodliest. I do. I do feel like mine may just be mediocre good. But my four good things that made me feel good. For the first time, my prediction came true. I said last week that we were going to feel better this week, and we we do. <laughs> we everyone I know feels better this week, except for maybe Matt. It had to happen sometime. It had to happen. There is some sort of there's something in the air. There's happiness. I don't know if it's that around. DEI or what. <laughs> well, there's a little bit of DEI in the kinda, air. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. All right. Well. Damien, get us started with Ooh, story. I won't of the without week. the music. There we go. I, I mean, look. First of all, I gotta say this. It was one of the happier moments of my recent life. I I was uh, <laughs> at a, 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 a they call it a camp. It was way up in Maine. <laughs> it, it was just uh, at least an hour from anyone else. No phones, no cell phone coverage, no Wi-Fi. And then Sunday, the owner of the place comes and tells us that Biden has announced he's stepping down. And first of all, wow. I, yes, I was happy. I love Joe Biden, actually. I, I think he's the most consequential and important president of my lifetime. That, honestly, I really honestly believe this, but I'm not going to go into that now. But what I was most happy about was that I got to hear news the old fashioned way. And I didn't have to hear I didn't have to hear seventeen thousand annoying treat. opinions about how I should think about the news. I got to sit there and just talk about it with people for a while and actually contemplate what I thought about it and I I fucking I loved it. I just I guess I also loved it because I'm also really excited by the woman who's re- who was running for president and just excited in general. But but I just love getting news that way. So that's my first story of the week anyway. That it's it doesn't really wait. Yeah. Is the story that you got told I got to by go a away. guy that after <laughs> Ari and Matt go to every country on earth, I finally went somewhere. Of course I went to Maine, but whatever. You went in Maine. <laughs> To uh, a patch of gl- grass. Look, now. I had a canoe in a pond. What more do I really need? I mean, okay, but I here's mean, I, l- a, here's I live a, yeah. on a pond with a canoe, so uh, okay, there you go. <laughs> I, I, but here's how I entered this story, and I know that Chantal in her Gen Z section is going to cover this in much more depth. But Harris is not is not only running for president, but she's joining TikTok. Ooh. After, remember, now remember, Biden, the old man, tried to ban TikTok, which we know is never really going to happen. But uh, I just thought it was interesting that she's kind of like, eh, she's joining TikTok. Trump wanted but, to ban TikTok too. Kamala is no, but ban he, cha- he changed also. his mind. Yeah, the, did but she? Kamala? No, but when she is president, she's someone's going to hand her the intel that shows like how you more much. To say about this? TikTok is a national security problem. Sean, yeah, you have more to say about this, say. right? All right, let's let's just skip that. My story right, of the week, my first story of the week is, of course, Biden is stepping down, and and we're gonna we may have a, a not only a woman, but uh, and not uh, may we half, will half Indian, half black. Uh, this is this is this is competing with Mexico's president Claudia Scheinbaum. I mean, right? Finally, we can catch up to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's the first story of the week. Second story of the week. Right, right in our wheelhouse, the secret battle for the future of the Murdoch Empire. Ooh. Uh, I who like here that has watched? Has anyone watched Succession here? I have not. I've watched the first season. It's kind of sad. What a sad group of people. It's the only show about That's why corporate I governance. Watching. It's probably one of the best shows ever, and it's all about corporate governance, and yet I'm the only one who watched it. But <laughs> what's amazing is how much it parallels that show. But, but what we're learning from the New York Times essentially is that Rupert Murdoch is moving secretly to change his trust, which when he dies, and I think he's, he, well, he's what, 241 years old, I think? I, I don't I know. Think I think he and Trump are the same age, aren't they? 
the trust as it originally stands is supposed to hand out equal shares to his four children, Prudence, Lachlan, James, and Elizabeth. So 25% shares, 25% voting power over the whole Fox empire. That includes News Corp, Fox Corp, right? I think it's two, yeah. two yeah, companies it's that we companies. cover in our database. Yeah. Uh, but now he wants to give it all to Lachlan, who is <laughs> who, who is the currently still the chair of News Corp. Um, and the, is he still the chair and CEO of Fox, I believe? I think so, yeah. Uh, I, like I should look at our data. all the voting power or all... The well, trust money. voting power. Just power everything, trust. right? Just everything. Giving He wants to give him majority control of the whole wow, Fox talk empire. Wow, about favorites. Uh, Lachlan, the New York Times is reporting that Lachlan was the only one who showed up to Rupert's latest marriage, which just happened. Um, oh. his, <laughs> his fifth <laughs> wife. Uh, and I guess why this is important is because uh, Rupert is scared that the other three children are not, you know, disgusting, horrible conservatives. And <laughs> yeah, only that's Lo- true. Only that's Lachlan right. is, and only Lachlan will further the, the horrible conservative empire. So, I don't know, this is a great corporate governance battle uh, unfolding before our eyes. So, this is right up our wheelhouse. So, I had to pick this story. Huh. I mean, that size. <laughs> I, ju- I just like, you know, like the, the Murdoch empire yeah. thing. Like, I like. I just can't care that much. Like I, I know it's like the most watched thing, and it's basically the between that and social media is the single source of terrible information uh-huh. and like um, seems pretty significant. And, but but it, it was. Did we ever think that Rupert Murdoch was going to cede control to anyone but some horrible, you know, like conservative? asshole that mm-hmm. was his family but well, which is why him dying and other children his family like one of them includes a climate change activist yes well the his, real story is that this is another is. dual class company this is another company where investors another media company. don't get to say yeah. anything mm-hmm. about what happens with the company that they own right that's just that's the story here. These are uninvestable assets. So whatever the Murdochs do and the drama is just the drama. The real thing is it's an uninvestable asset. Ooh. All right. Uh, what else? I will say this, that currently uh, Fox Corporation in our data, uh, Lachlan Murdoch controls 75% of influence. So I, I don't even know. Yikes. You know, we're making the assumption that if the trust stands as it is, that he'll only control 25% of the umpire. So we're making the assumption that the siblings will vote against him, but we don't know that that's true. They might still vote for the family and still... That was part of the drama of succession that even though they all hated their their horrible conservative father, who was basically Rupert Murdoch, they still did things in the family way, voted with the family because everyone just loved the power and money. And it's they didn't, the family. So even yeah. though they were liberal it's and were angry at the conservative messaging... They didn't care. It was power. It was money. So it's anyway. It's a conservative Cosa Nostra. Uh, moving right, on. What else you got? The third, I mean, these are some big stories to me at least. The third story is is uh, is uh, is mind bending. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I read this earlier and I can't believe what I'm about to say. Listen to this. The, the Justice Department submitted an agreement with Boeing on Wednesday in which the aerospace giant will plead guilty... Yeah. But listen to what they're pleading guilty to. Shut up, audience. Guilty. No, just let the audience have its moment. Someone's guilty guilty of something. To a a fraud charge. Fraud. A fraud charge for misleading U.S. regulators who approved the 737 MAX jetliner before, before two of the planes crash, killing... 346 people. This is this is crazy. I mean, just a. I, I'm sorry. This is just. I, I, my mind is just blown by this. Boeing I, pleading guilty to fraud. Can they be convicted of murder now? Why? But can why we just call them they? murderers? Why couldn't they? I, so part of the deal, uh, uh, Boeing admitted that through its employees, it made an agreement by dishonest means to defraud the FAA. So the deal calls for. 
uh, and this is the important part for us, the appointment of an independent compliance monitor. Matt, Ooh, what is that? We were joking before the show that the state, the current state of corporate governance, the current state of the U.S. board, which is supposed to provide independent oversight of company management, it actually, it, it, it basically needs its own board now. It needs. Yes, it, that's correct. It, it needs a board. <laughs> it needs an independent board to oversee it. Right. <laughs> and that's what this deal is calling for. It's basically calling for an actual set of independent monitors to take care of, to look over Boeing. Well, the reason why we said that is so we created, I mean, this show is brought to you by Freeflow Analytics. Freeflowanalytics.com. You can go sign up with an email account, look up every single director that's active in the world. I use today, it every day. And, no joke. And, and you can find out how they perform and how powerful they are. But our data set includes who they're connected to, what their knowledge is. We have estimates for everything. Like, and we're, we, we can effectively measure how good these people are. But we were talking about this because we are trying to sell this data and, con and like consulting around the data to the people <laughs> that we basically would be disrupting, right? Like the people who vote and the people who are on boards. Like, so. So we realized that if we wanted the data to get used the way it should, we need another board in between <laughs> the investors and the board that could look at the data and say, oh, well, this is what you should be doing because you are all compromised, right? Like we wouldn't have the Kimball Musk gets reelected problem if you had an independent board in between voting on whether Kimball Musk should be elected because they actually were using data. I, it is it is a little bit bananas, but this, I am dubious yeah. that they, Boeing's going to get an actual, like who's the independent <laughs> compliance yeah, well, that's, monitor? That's a great question. But but to me, this this serves as one of the, the greatest, uh, uh, I don't know, the greatest signs, the greatest statements that what we do is important because yes. we have been screaming about Boeing forever and the government essentially is telling them is is ordering them to have an independent monitor, basically what we've been saying, right? Yeah, they that's need right. A chaperone. Yeah. There are real <laughs> consequences to this. Yeah. I mean, wh what we hope, what we hope for all the corporations that we yell about, we don't, we don't want the consequences to be actual death of 346 people. But again, this is a, yeah. a great, you know, a, a great example, maybe the best example ever of why this stuff is important. It does seem to take death in order for anyone People to, pay to pay attention, attention now. Well, right. that's crazy because this didn't happen directly following that, right? No, oh, this is 10 years. Yeah, this six, is, seven years later, six, seven years later. Like, is this because of the recent investigation because of the door plug or is it an, like the investigation? No, because the investigation from 2018 and 2019 when the mm -hmm. planes fell out of the sky, that mm -hmm. was done. But there was the investigation of how the planes fell out of the sky, and then there was the investigation, ongoing investigation about how what they told regulators in advance of these things happening, and effectively what they've done is lie to regulators for a, for years, for years they've Culture. lied to regulators. Culture. And when you look at it, two hundred and forty three. Two hundred forty-four million dollars is how much they paid, right? That's the so, that's the fine. Three years, yeah, three years of probation and two hundred forty-three million dollar fine. I yeah. didn't look up these numbers, but in six nothing, years, nothing. at an average, you know, total a summary compensation of twenty million a year for Dave Calhoun, you're talking about he made one hundred and twenty. He can yeah. almost pay this fine with his salary <laughs> over those six uh, years, yeah. but he's not going to. The shareholders are paying this fine. Mm -hmm. The shareholders, the people who own the company pay the fine. The people who run the company keep their jobs and the money. Yeah, How is not, that a thing? Let's not forget that Calhoun is still CEO. Still, despite like promising all of us that he'd leave, he's still there. He's still uh, waiting. Yeah, correct. Correct. Uh, that's wow. the third big story. And finally, the fourth story. I, I just had to cover this one just because it made me laugh. Last week, I covered CrowdStrike how their CEO was deeply sorry about everything. Yeah, he was very <laughs> sorry. Deeply yeah. sorry. Because yeah. basically he was doing his best to kind of help shut down the internet, right? Like it, it affected air travel, banks, 911, so <laughs> many important things. Yeah, it was that great. Make, right, it was, it was a very a very big uh, meltdown last Friday. Um, they're call, they called it one of the biggest uh, corporate snow days ever because a lot of workers couldn't go to work. They couldn't do their jobs. Um, 
So CrowdStrike, uh, <laughs> this is just this silly. I don't even know how this is real. CrowdStrike <laughs> is facing uh, new backlash after giving staff and firms they work with a $10 Uber Eats voucher to say sorry for its global <laughs> IT outage, right? And this is an actual quote from CrowdStrike to these people. To express our gratitude, your next cup of coffee or late night snack is on us. Oh, now, yeah, finally. Well, this Here's is the... a double win for the workers, right? Yeah, because no that's true. The coffee? Yeah, yeah that's they get to right. stay, and they get to stay later, a late night snack? I don't like that part. I don't like the inference there. They're there at 1 a.m. Mm, correcting all the... Well, they have to day. be. Yeah, correcting yeah, all they... the issues made by the snow day. <laughs> So they did. CrowdStrike did have to admit that this was their error too. They said that this was a bug in their patch. Right. So no, because there was no a moment attack. where everyone was blaming Microsoft. Right. Like, in fact, Elon Musk went on his stupid social media site to say to laugh at Microsoft, um, and it turns out that this was just CrowdStrike. And, and here's the kicker to this story. This is the best part of the story. You think it's already good. Here's the here's the even better part. Uh, several recipients encountered an error message when trying to make use of their voucher, which said that they had been that it had been canceled by the issuing party and were no longer valid. Yeah, a, that's right. a crowd strike yeah. spokesperson. That's right. That's amazing. Who is this spokesperson? A crowd strike spokesperson said Uber had blocked the cards after high usage rates triggered a fraud alert. <laughs> right. So they yeah. couldn't even get the voucher right. Couldn't even get people, it right. People got their vouchers and immediately ordered something on Uber Eats. Yeah, that, they, that was fast because they, they were they were actually worried that the voucher yeah. would fail. I think um, you can and get it. And they did. I think you can get half a latte at Starbucks for $10, right? Oh, my right? God. Somebody had third, this idea. I'm sure somebody had to, like, fight hard to get the money for this. Yeah, Crazy. well, it is a dual-class company, and the... The founder owns 20 percent of the company and of the voting power, and the other ten percent is owned by the private equity venture capital firm that you yeah, know basically funded George the company. George Kurtz is the current CEO and founder. Yeah. So you are talking about a company that the employees would have had to go to Kurtz and be like, "We got to do something. You got to yeah. send something." <laughs> and they were like, "What about a gift basket?" And he's like, "No, too difficult." So, so like, 1994. How about yeah. ten dollars at Uber Eats? Uh, ten dollars at Uber Eats gets you the fee to get the Uber Eats. I was going to gonna say, does that does that include the service charge, the tip? No, all that of stuff? course not. It's it's that is the service charge is like seven ninety nine. You basically <laughs> can get something for two dollars. Wow. <laughs> It's amazing. Congratulations, CrowdStrike, for just staying right, rel so you're, staying relevant you're, in our show. Your options this week are the uh, it's just Kamala Harris, um, of course, and yeah. then the Murdoch Empire drama, Boeing pleading guilty to fraud, and CrowdStrike's ten dollar apology. I'll go first. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> Failed ten dollar apology. I think. Boeing pleading guilty. To wow, God. over really? so wow. out there in our world. Wow, really? Yeah, this is a tough um, one. No, it's not. It's Kamala Harris. <laughs> it is. It is. I agree, but it, but it should be Boeing pleading guilty to fraud. That I mean, is fraud. crazy. The CEO That's of the crazy. United States of America just announced they're stepping down in 2025, I know, I know. despite the fact awesome that they crazy. could stay there, mm -hmm. yeah. and they are they are offering up. Touché. Basically, uh, Wait, the, the, yeah. a DEI candidate, which is what the conservatives have already been talking about, that this is a DEI candidate. Uh, th this is the, which now the we know most is amazing now, which now we know is code for black. Time. Now we know it's code for black or woman because her... Or her, unqualified she's, she's their her, minds. Oh, she's crazy qualified. I mean... I uh, know. I it's mean, you could, I couldn't think of a, another person right now who would want to run this country other than Elizabeth Warren, but I'm a liberal from New England, oh. so... No, oh, my God, you so... Uh, Chantal, what's your vote on this one? I mean, obviously, I'm covering Harris, so I would agree with that, but yeah. for yeah. the purpose of uh -oh. what we've oh. talked about, I would, I would say Boeing with Ari. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Wait, I'm going to... Oh. I'm vetoing. I'm vetoing. Can I veto <laughs> yeah, their votes? that's right. That doesn't exist. You can You guys veto. are... You're nuts. I mean, I appreciate right. what you're saying, Chantal, and you're right in any other week, but come on. I mean, what are we doing here? Moving on to good Wait, you're moving me on? 
Yeah, okay, you just got played fine. off. <laughs> the winner is Kamala Harris. That's the story of the week. Right. So let me open up Good Leafs of the Week by saying that is obviously the Good Leafs of the Week. However, I pulled These four other s- stories. So, so this is sub Good Yep. Okay, sub Good Leafs of the Week. And we're going to start with this one that I hope you guys care about. Just as much as I do. I'm just mad at you. For Stanley for Black and Decker, which is based here in Connecticut, actually, hmm. to sell leaf blower silencer designed oh, by Oh, yes. Yeah, we covered this. Oh. Best Come news ever. On. This is the best news for people in the suburbs. Yeah. Four engineering students at Johns oh, Hopkins, they this. created uh, this module for leaf blowers that reduced noise pollution by 37%. That's it? 37% is not enough. That is over a third, and that is no, a lot. No, we need more than that. They completely removed the high-pitched sound that annoyed them the most. They started with the leaf blowers on their campus that they hate. Hey, yeah, that's why they did it, because it was waking them up at like 8 in the morning. Hey, yep. Stanley, how about you just just convert completely to battery-powered uh, leaf blowers, and then it, this problem solved. Those, though, they make no noise. They're still loud. No, the amazing... Are they really? Are they that loud? Yeah, they're still... They're not as loud, but they're still loud. The amazing part about this is that it's literally like a like a little cone. Uh-huh. Like, it's nothing. <laughs> like, they, they invented, like, a piece of plastic that's, like, so cool. three inches long. Like, it's not that... And it's worked so well that Stanley Black & Decker bought them out. <laughs> It's getting patented, and they're going to start selling it uh, to the market by 2025. Oh, you know you're right, right, Matt. I like this, but this is an old story. Yeah. You know you're right, Matt, though. I'm surprised by this. So gas-powered leaf blowers, uh, about 80 to 90 decibels. Uh, Electric model is about 65 to 70. You've got to wear ear protection. So it's still bad. No, my ears are shot. How about this? Ears are playing CBGBs. I have a novel idea. If this company ever were to fail, which won't ever happen... Yeah, what about what, let's invent a company and let's let's invent some a tool called like a rake like a like a but almost <laughs> like a giant fork right with a think think of a fork wow. multiply the size of that fork by like a hundred in your head and then use that to like scoop up the leaves we could, no actually I can invent a, a verb too how about you could rake the leaves with the rake right how about that I I actually, exercise. I'm going to invent something on top the of your invention it's called a rake silencer it's <laughs> <laughs> How about a All Damien right, silencer? Yeah. Chase, this is Chase Bank, to bar customers from using credit cards to pay to, to you. Bleh. Let me restart. Yeah, go ahead. Chase, to bar customers from using credit cards for pay later loans. Why is this that is good? the nation's largest credit card issuer, and mm-hmm. they will no longer allow. I guess that's what was happening. Their, their customers were using it's really their credit cards to pay. Payments on a sounds different like an, credit sounds line. Sounds like an Escher drawing. I don't really understand. <laughs> like, yeah, what it sounds really like a is. personal Ponzi scheme. <laughs> it yeah. is. It is. Anyway, you Ponzied yourself. They have said no more <laughs> as of October. Well, look Not again. Now. Don't get crazy. Again, buy the rake and save yourself some money, right? I mean, what are we doing here, people? <laughs> uh, next, U.S. solar production soars by twenty-four percent in just one year. Yeah, I like this one. I like this and one. And may I add? Does that mean it was cool. hotter out? 25% in the first five months of the year. Okay. Uh, no, it means that construction of solar plants of solar plants have boomed in the U.S. Um, and they all came online at the end of last year. So the Energy of Information Agency, the EIA, they're predicting that solar mm-hmm. production could rise by as much as 42% by the end of 2024. Finally, so finally, we can power all the, need, the needs of we the Silicon Valley bros. We have all a ton the of money. AI. We're throwing money. They're building. They're building plants. Roughly, We're how long does it take farms. to build a solar plant? Oh, like a, a solar. farm? Yeah. I mean, they did this like two years. No, way faster. You can do that faster. Yeah. I'm they just were doing wondering this in because like six months. I'm trying to figure out like, like, Biden starts as president. Yeah. Passes the infrastructure bill. There's money to do solar, yep. and then lo and behold, they're doing solar. there's solar. Yep. And <laughs> what <laughs> concept? And the production rises by forty two percent by the end of twenty twenty four. And they're saying solar and wind deployments of these new projects because of this money, they're expected to dwarf any other energy project uh, in the through this year and next year. Unless I mean, it's Trump almost like magic. Elected. Uh, Don't say those uh, words. This is the crazy part, though, because the biggest beneficiaries of the renewables are Texas. It it is Texas, 
Florida, mm -hmm. and heavily conservative states who are legislating yeah, that's what's nuts discrimination about against nuts. fossil fuels. They're making all the money from these solar plants. Yeah, they, they right? created, like they the created a is. culture war over this very sort of simple subject, and yet they they're should benefiting just own from it. The they should yeah. no. take back the renewable energy and somehow make it conservative. That would be fine. They should just I'd be okay with that. Sun American again. What they, yeah. But, <laughs> yes. I like yeah. this. I like this. Yeah. Can, Fuck you, France. Can we put a... a it's our a, a, sun. Can we drape a giant flag over the sun that won't burn? Is that possible? What they got to work yeah, on that at University of Texas. Uh, mostly, we can make I think we, should, we need to... Take all the solar, the solar rays. Yeah, see, yeah, again, another use for a funnel, right? To, <laughs> to quiet a, a leaf solar, blower and to a calm solar the sun. silencer. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And I got one more that I just uh, snuck in there. All right. Microsoft. World of Warcraft workers a vote to unionize. Okay. Ooh. This adds more than 500 workers to um, the total unionized Microsoft employees. Well, okay. they're it's owned by Microsoft, but this is a big deal because where Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard for $69 billion, they promised regulators that they would remain neutral on organizing promised. efforts. They promised. They promised. Yeah. They okay. Did. Nothing. Was, nothing in writing. No. Yeah. That was the deal. No. I, no. They sh they sh they spit into their hands oh. and then well, shook them. That's so blah blah blah. So they voted. You know, 500 workers voted to unionize. We'll see how this plays out. But this would bring the total to more than uh, 1,700 workers, according to the Communications Workers of America. Okay. And you know who loves this story. Bobby Kotick. Oh, that guy right. loves this story because he sold, and he's a billionaire thanks to Microsoft, and he does not have to deal with the unions. At I think. All. I mean, this is a huge deal. This, these are white collar workers unionizing, right? And video games, they make you a lot of white money. White collars. And what do you mean? Yeah, um, I think he's talking about Miles's sartorial I, choices. I will say that, uh, and, and I like this story. Ari, but th that. <laughs> You What's might, the butt? You might have yeah. missed. There's a uh, here. It, this is news, I think, from this morning or yesterday. But uh, the, the the SAG AFTRA part of this part of the Screen Actors Guild is um, our video game performers, right? The the the, the actors who voice uh, uh -huh. video games, uh -huh. representing a hundred. The union represents a hundred and sixty thousand of these performers, I believe. They you need are that also that many performers for honestly, video what games. What am I doing with my life? They are, are go, they me? voted to go on strike beginning today because they Ooh. are uh, angry ah. about the future of gener generative AI. So this is just breaking out of SAG after us. So there's a I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't I don't understand what that has to do with my story. Or well, what do you mean? It's it's games. more people in the video You're game correct. world going on strike. How dare you? <sighs> okay. You just <laughs> mad that the number's bigger. You're just mad that <laughs> <laughs> trying to one up me. Over Why don't here? we just include all those stories and say that gamer nerdy types are going on strike? Uh, how about we um, don't vote for that one anyway because it's <laughs> okay. the weakest of the right. group. Because the performance people are upset that their jobs can be done by AI. That is just bananas. So um, you're not supporting that strike. I am not supporting them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, like, our yeah, winner replaced you soon. Their job should be done by AI. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you all are pointless. That's what <laughs> Anyone Ari, vote the on data this? queen, says. The, yeah, I'm there's voting. there's so many of them, too. Are you kidding let's, me? Let's show Tall take over. This is going <laughs> off rails. Oh, now, as a suburbanite. Am I, am I starting the vote? Go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. As a suburbanite, I have to go with the leaf blower story. Heck well, yeah. yeah. I'm really torn between leaf blower and solar production. This is a huge problem in your street. Yeah. I don't, mean, all, you don't guys should mandate Matt. that everyone in your street needs to be using But this. I don't care about it. It's so loud. I it doesn't have, bother I you? I told you. Very I, unpleasant street. I was on <laughs> stage at CBGB's and the Continental and the oh, Lions so you're already Den. Deaf. And you're I'm already deaf. deaf. I'm like, I was telling my kids. Anyway. You know, it's funny. I Just yesterday, I, was, I had to tell my kids, like, I grew up. I'm a Gen Xer, just like Matt's describing. I'm our, I'm deaf. Like I, the music it's was done. so unbelievably loud for 20 years of my yeah. life. I don't I'm know what's going on. We would go to concerts and we'd be in the front moshing, no. 
and nothing the speakers in our ears. are yeah. nothing in your ears. You barely had anything on your feet. Like you're, it was so loud. I and then bring you would earplugs leave. to concerts. And then you would leave and put your headphones up to like volume fifteen because you yeah. can't because at ten it was Walkman. too muted. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on the Walkman. And uh, what I like about that story is not the sound part of it. It is mm. that four students made a cone that they could sell the <laughs> black. Are you agreeing with Chantal? They, is that your vote too? No, I am no. voting for U.S. Solar Production. I'm voting for the one that matters. Like the other ones, only kind of matter. I, Ears matter. I appreciate. No, the other ones moderately matter. Solar production is big. I certainly appreciate what Chantal is saying. Although, I mean, I don't want Chantal to out her family, but I, I wonder, like, do they? Do they use rakes? I mean, they could. I, I, mean, I know I was joking I'll about rakes, know, but we we use yeah. an old fashioned lawnmower that has to be pushed. Has to be a, oh. gas. A, a gas, gas loud, no, a loud no, pushy motor. No. no. Oh, you use the actual. That you have to run with. Oh, the like the, 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 yeah, oh, wow. All Chantal, right. that's, that's beautiful. That's where the audience likes that too. The little that, blades. Because we don't yeah. need any of this nonsense if we just, I don't know, we don't even need the, the obesity drugs if we just all like pushed the lawnmower <laughs> and raked our own leaves. But that's a whole nother diatribe. I'm going to, uh, I got to, uh, sorry, I usually, I love creating ties, but I got to agree with Matt. Any, yeah. any renewable energy source at all, any uptick, and, and you're right. Uh, I, I, you're, you're smart to point out, too, that this, this is something that Biden accomplished and that mm-hmm. uh, he's handing off to a woman. Hopefully that she's even isn't she even more to the left of Joe on climate causes? She's actually might on even do climate, more. On climate. She climate. may be more left. But on most other things, she's actually very much a centrist. But I like this might, But this is a, a hopefully a, a good sign of things to come. So there you go. I'm going to vote for that one, too. That's the winner, I'm obviously, which brings us to Gen Z of the week. Oh, so you st- I was doing like Gen Z ist. Gen Z ist. Right. It's Gen Z ist. Mm-hmm. No, right. Gen Z ist. Yeah. Huh? You have well, to that's have what I e. said. D- uh, does it need the double I e? I guess it needs the double have e. a dash. Mm-hmm. Gen Z Z ist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm copying right. Ari's good list. Okay. Oh. I like it. <laughs> okay. All right, so what do we got? Starting up with a short one and a little bit of um, throw a bone to the Elon Musk lovers and haters no. of the world. <laughs> oh no, there are no lovers. Uh huh. So just the haters. Um, Elon. There's Musk just trans- Stockholm syndrome and haters. <laughs> mm-hmm. And those who escape the Stockholm syndrome and cut all um, legal and relational ties with their father, Elon Musk's oh. transgender daughter says he was an absent and cruel father. And I'm glad Ooh. that they're speaking out Shocking. about it. Cruel. Yeah, a fellow... Cruel. No one's going to have a hard time believing that. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I thought it was cool. Jenna Wilson, a 20-year-old um, Gen Zer, um, fellow Gen Zer, um, talked about um, Musk and kind of put to rest some of his fake news that he's put out there. Um, about not knowing about the medical forms, you know, it relates to the California legislation we saw last le- week. Um, Musk has claimed to not know anything about Wilson's, um, you know, medical needs when going transgender. And Wilson has then spoken out and, you know, put it all to rest. Yeah. This story is stupid and sad. Yeah. It's sad for sure. Yeah, I, there was a there's like it is amazing how much I mean, I thought somebody would grab an Elon Musk story this week. It, it is amazing how much, I almost how many did. stories. He there was generates. a lot of stories this week. And I almost I don't even understand them. it anymore. Like, I don't I don't even know why because I don't know if you mentioned this, Chantal. I'm sorry, but the, he the reason he, he was using to move. Is it SpaceX or is it? Twitter yeah. or X? I think it's SpaceX re- to ca- Texas because of the California legislation. Right. He, I mean, what a what a bananas thought to shareholders that that's the reason. I mean, that alone should disqualify you from being CEO, right? Like, that's the of reason five companies, you're moving yeah. a corporate entity to another state because of your one just bizarre political view on one social issue. Like, and, and this is the guy who has preached to all of us to that CEO should not be involved with social and political issues. Like this is not a yeah, this well, is not an acceptable threat. he is and this is not an acceptable reason to move a corporate entity. And just a, yet another reason why any Are shareholder supporting counted? this guy is crazy. It's just yeah, crazy it's, to me. 
it's all shareholders. He won 77% or 74% of the pay vote. He They won the by Tesla a landslide vote, right? getting Tesla to Texas. They reelected Kimball Musk and James Murdoch. These are, no one cares. Like no one. So him well, moving the, to Texas, what do they who care? Does care. Don't, no one cares. Just, just make me money. That's all it is. Except who does care are the other Tesla customers, right? The, the sales and are the employees. plummeting. Yeah, yeah. The sales, at least in California especially, the sales are plummeting for Tesla cars. Ari and I covered earlier this week that um, he, Musk said in the last earnings call, I think it was the earnings call, he said the, their expectation is to use humanoid robots to build the Teslas by 2025 and my uh-huh, like get, my cheeky guess is they don't mind swastikas drawn on the bathroom wall so oh. that that that's how you that would that, be a that's what we're talking about robot yeah that minded that it, woke yeah. robots don't exist yeah. yet so mm. okay killed by the woke mind virus exactly yeah, yeah. the second um, headline goes outside of the u.s though um, Daily Mail says that labor says Tory law against cancel culture um, is at work and universities could be taxed because um, woke culture is a burden. So Wait, it, it could be taxed. They're taxing woke culture. Wait, Wait explain this story. Axed. 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 I oh, thought that axed. was a mistypo, but yes. Yeah. No, axed. Yeah. The. And, and I'll let you finish, but what we are, yeah, we are seeing a lot of this, right? We're seeing that a lot of the anti woke legislation. We just saw this, I think, in Texas. No, was it maybe Oklahoma or Texas? Oklahoma. That, it was Oklahoma. The laws that they're creating are so annoying and dumb and burdensome and costly that they're just, they're not even worth it in the first place. I think that's kind of what you're saying here, Chantal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. My question just with this headline was how would this be um, enforced? Well, that's been the problem with all of these things. Um, like the all of the anti ESG, anti woke, anti DEI stuff is basically trying to say you if you can't discriminate on like uh, you're discriminating on race by having like a committee to help black people, but that means you're discriminating against political ideologies. So we're going to protect those. But then in reality, it's like, yeah, that's not enforcing. That's not really a thing. Like you can't like, first of all, it's not a marginalized community. Second of all, like uh, it's not, you can't that's the enforce thing that. that. That they're missing, of course. Yeah. So yeah, none of these are really enforceable. And Oklahoma, the uh, federal judge, I think just basically gave a permanent stay to the anti-ESG legislation well, in I don't, Oklahoma. I don't remember the language, but there was a federal um, uh, group, a federal that, that said that basically it was a threat to national security. To these anti-ESG laws were a threat to national security, essentially. No, right? I'm coming to that in okay, the assholes. Are, okay. <laughs> right. mm. okay, so moving on to the story I stole from Damien. Um, I'm talking yes, about how Harris... Steel. <laughs> Harris campaign joins TikTok after Biden signed ban. Fox headline. Mm-hmm. I wonder why she didn't join as VP. Uh, she wasn't campaigning for anything. You gotta campaign as VP. You gotta help your. You mm. gotta help get reelected. She saw the future. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So already presidential foresight there. Um, but obviously interesting with the comparison. Fox um, mentions later that Trump. Um, as president did issue the executive order to ban TikTok um, that was right. then challenging court and also covered how he has since reversed his position, saying that there are a lot of people on TikTok that love it and that if the app, app were banned, Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg, his mortal, mortal em- enemy, would benefit. Um, and according mm-hmm. to him, an enemy of the people. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That's correct. Wait, wait. W- uh, w- explain to me. I don't want to go too deep here on TikTok. I know, that, but I'm about to. What is the brat summer, Chantal? <laughs> well, that is what wa- the Washington Post has been asking all week. Um, so yeah. basically, there are all these edits on TikTok and on every. Chantal social. just called me old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this is like you have to be chronically online to understand it a little bit. Um, but mm-hmm. I guess um, it, it's gone really viral, so it's hitting a wide audience. Um, but Brett Summer, Charlie XCX, pop icon right now, 
really popular yeah. album debuting um, among Gen Z. It's called Brat. She's actually the one who did the music for Barbie, the Barbie movie. Okay. Um, and they're making a lot of edits about Kamala Harris and her famous I love line, it. you think you just fell out yeah. of a coconut tree. Um, you okay. exist in the context of all that came before you. Um, Beautiful. Because it's just a little silly. Um, and it gains a wide viewership because it's just so chaotic and crazy. And Charlie yeah. XCX has officially um, endorsed Kamala Harris and her campaign. Yeah. So um, all the Ooh. Charlie XCX fans. Wait, somebody explain who that is. The, the pop so icon? Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm just kidding. I, I still don't. I don't care about these people. Uh-huh. Well, I, you should care because finally we found a good use for TikTok, which is to help uh, elect uh, the They're first female president of the United States. That's a good. When is, is Taylor no Swift going to endorse Kamala Harris? Yeah, tell us, Chantal. Will when? Power. When will Taylor Swift endorse? You know, when will Travis Kelsey? That's the real question. And Chantal, <laughs> Chantal, have you been to a Taylor Swift show? I have when I was in seventh grade. Oh, so you're oh, an old wow. school. Okay, so mm-hmm. you're I an like old school of the game now. Yeah. You're like okay. an ancient Swifty. Oh, oh you but, like her old stuff. Uh-huh. But can oh, you, you please? Do you see how it happens? Do yeah. you see how it happens? That's how everybody, ha- like, we're here saying, like, Taylor Swift is just the next version of somebody else when we were Alanis Morissette Madonna. or whatever. And, and, and even Chantal is like, yeah, I like Taylor Swift, but I like her old stuff. Yeah, yeah. Her new Back stuff, in the shit. day. Back in the day, she was good. Me out of Gen Z. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, Chantal, I do want you to answer one thing, though. Seriously, when will Taylor endorse <laughs> Kamala? Do you know? October. Do you have that information? October. Month okay. of there yeah, why, October. I think you're right. Why blow it now? Let's 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 I get agree. some buzz going right before the election. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. She has to go with I the girl she's, power. Yeah. She's busy touring. All right. Mm-hmm. So your three Gen Z stories are. Wait, is she done? You, you cutting her off? Are you done, Chantal? Yeah, I mean, I've got, got a little it. bit more to say. About yeah, let her say more. It. Let her say it, man. Well, basically, this is a huge story because 170 million um, users of TikTok are American, and more 170 than million. 170 million. 170 million. That's, that's that's half the that's half the country. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Genuinely, it's crazy about that. and yeah. more than a third use the app to keep up with politics, um, which is Great. way more than <sighs> Facebook that's or Instagram scary. or any other type of social media. So TikTok is the all. political influence app. You know, yeah. Harris, wow. Biden, Trump. Actually, I don't think that Biden has an account, but Harris and Trump both have an account because they it's a political necessity mm-hmm. right now. Be funny if Biden had an account while Biden he's trying does to have ban an it. Account. Yeah. There was does a he? stories about yeah, it was stories about he joined but like did one post where he ate a cookie or something. It sounds like our oh, sounds like Which our is, It literally <laughs> is our social accounts. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Trump's first post on it um included a UFC title fighter. Um, huh? So really? Yep. Yeah, genuinely, yeah. It yeah has, Dana White. Uh huh. It has over 164 million views on the app, whereas mm-hmm. Kamala Harris currently her first video has 10 million, but that was posted 16 hours ago. So I, I'd say that's a pretty good viewership. Yeah. Wow. Something tells me this. I, I know we're joking about it, but th- this is an important part of this campaign. Mm-hmm. Right, her, right, her, her relevance to young people. And yeah, all this. and She's, Gen, yeah. Gen Z content creators have been the focus of both the Democratic and Republican parties. They're um, inviting them to the White House. They're inviting them to news <sighs> briefings of Russia's invasion on Ukraine. They're invited well, to the RNC convention. They're being paid to be influencers for the platform. Oh. <laughs> Why is our audience Literally buzzing? Daggers us so much? my heart. Can I? I will say this though. I I said this to somebody yes a few days ago that what Kamala does represent for young people is what what they missed out on during the the Obama the first Obama uh, election. Right. This this yeah. just this this goodwill. This this feeling of joy and hope back in two thousand eight. The, the, it can now kind of be recreated for them having the first. That hasn't you know, existed since. No, it hasn't. You're right, but it but right. it, it was such an since important moment. It's a it's an important moment of our lives that I'm sure young people probably you know some feel envious that uh, that they missed out on. And then this is their chance to get the first you know woman in the White House. So Matt, yeah, you're great. You're, you're, you're shrugging, that. but I, I wouldn't underestimate the power. Yeah, that, this could that, have. that has nothing to do with TikTok. The latest poll showed that 18 to 34 year olds um, favor Kamala Harris 60 to 40. 
That's oh, it. Oh, that's Come too on, close. we got to get that higher. That's, a, that's actually a, a really big gap considering Biden was, they favored Trump over Biden, right? So this is a big, is, it's a big deal. Is that true? Really? Yeah, they, they, they were, but, oh. uh, Trump was like slightly favored by in young most people? polls. By young people. I think it's just by because a people. lot of young people refrained from supporting Biden. I right. think if push had come to shove, more young people would have voted Biden, but no one, no one was happy with him. But yeah. the likelihood is they probably wouldn't have actually shown up to vote. No, they wouldn't right? have. They like, wouldn't have voted. Absolutely um, not. So now they're likely to show up to vote just because it's Kamala. What do you fucking need TikTok for? Do we need Do we need that? Do, can we get rid of that? Well, it sounds yeah, like the it. TikTok influencers are doing it before her even. So, Brat Summer. <laughs> right. All right, Brat Summer. Uh, I'm so Come confused. <laughs> no, I All think right, Matt's not vote. voting for that one. <laughs> I'm not voting for that. I hate let's it. Let's vote. What do we have? Uh, but it is very we, Gen Z. It's, remember, this is a Gen z -iest. That's correct. That's why oh. I hate it. Um, uh, Elon Musk's transgender daughter disowns oh, him. I can't vote um, for that. I can't the vote for that. Uh, labor says a Tory law against cancel culture is going to be axed because it's actually stupid and a problem. <laughs> I like that and, one. <laughs> and uh, Harris is on TikTok. Kamala Harris is on TikTok. I like that one too. Um, Ari, you go first. I'll go first. Yeah. I think the one that affects Gen Z. The Gen most Z right is. now is Harris going on TikTok. <laughs> Future yeah. president Kamala Take Harris. Damien, just make it, a, make it a sweep TikTok. of that. I mean, come so on. It has to, to be that story. It has yeah. to be. All right. Yeah. Now I'm not going to vote because anything, I hate that. But really, anything with Kamala, it should be anyway because it's a, it's a happy week for once. All of right. Her. Why don't you tell us the jerks this week, man? All right. Good. I have less than most weeks. Oh. Oh, good. It was hard. Um, That's a signal. Here's some data. There are just three banks in in this state that are publicly traded and stuck in the state because this is their state of incorporation. There's like nowhere else okay. to go. Leaving 171. Which state? I'm going to get there. Oh. 171 publicly traded U.S. banks that can just leave the state if they wanted uh -huh. to. Okay. 171. They could just leave. Just close your branch. You got business everywhere else. So you don't have to be there. There is one insurer in the state that is publicly traded, leaving 41 other insurers in the United States that can just stop insuring there, right? Like they don't, they're not there. Okay. They don't have to insure there, I'm whatever. A little confused so far. Yep. Here's the headline The Treasury Department warns that an anti woke Florida banking law is a national security risk. Right. And your second headline is. Another home insurance company is getting out of Florida. Wow. Ooh. Your asshole is anyone staying in Florida. Anyone. Just anybody. <laughs> anybody. You live there? Why? Why do you what live there? What about an alligator? What about, are you but mad look, at them? If you are... I would be mad. Alligators probably have better <laughs> places to go. Like, tr try Louisiana. Yeah, go to Barbados. Come on. <laughs> um, look, there are three banks and one insurer that have an excuse mm -hmm. why they are not going to leave Florida because th that's their state of incorporation. I see what you're saying. Got that it. means there are 171 and 41 insurers respectively mm -hmm. that can just leave this stupid state that debanked itself. They set up a law. The law said that banks are no longer allowed to consider anything political in their lending, including political speech, political, quote, liens, or political, quote, affiliations. You know what that includes? If you're a member of ISIS. Yeah. That is a political sure. affiliation, Absolutely. right? It also contravenes federal regulations that say you can't lend to certain, right. like, terrorist groups yeah. right. or, you know, sanctioned individuals, all that kind of stuff. So the banks in Florida now have a choice to make. They either lend to those groups and comply with Florida's laws or don't lend to those groups and risk getting sued by a terrorist for not getting a loan. <sighs> it's absolutely insane. They I'm, just, they had, there was no need for them to do this. It was the dumbest, it was purely it's DeSantis, political right? it's DeSantis. kabuki theater. It's yeah. all DeSantis. Opened them up to a huge Meatball, liability. Oh, putting Meatball fingers. run. Meatball run, yeah. Meanwhile, insurers can't consider climate change in their underwriting. That makes no sense. <laughs> that's <laughs> climate change that's the worst been ever. banned in Florida's politicians talk. Yeah. Exactly. They can't that's say the, the word climate change. That's the stupidest one ever, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Which means 
That and simultaneously, by legislation, they actually cap the amount that insurers can raise their rates. Mm -hmm. So they have said, don't consider climate change and also don't raise your rates. So what can an insurer do it, except what the headline says, which is just leave. There's nothing is, else to do. Doesn't and sound very business friendly. Not that I need to point this out to anyone, but this is also not South Dakota, right? This is a, a, a Florida. A Florida is, is in the heart of hurricane of the hurricane activity in the United States, and it's surrounded by water on all sides. I mean, this is just it yeah. is the state that you would want to consider climate change for everything you do. It is the state that where it is the most important. So here's my question. What are the 171 other banks and 41 other insurance companies even thinking about doing there? I mean, what is it anyone thinking about staying in Florida for? I don't for? know. Dwayne if Wade you, left, right? He took his family If you buy out. a house, okay, you cool. cannot insure it. You you can get a loan, but you might not. Like banks are just going to have to, they, they can't, they, they're going to be too afraid to lend to you because mm -hmm. you, everyone's a national security risk now because they don't know, they can't collect any information on you. Like, what can you even do there? Like, you Go get low beach. taxes. You go to the beach and you have low there taxes. There are other beaches, Chantal. You also have no Cape job Cod or home. Cape Cod has beaches. Mm. Get out of Florida. Anyone right. in Florida, okay. you're an asshole. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I number, agree. Number, <laughs> number two. Even if you're a listener or show and you live in Florida, you're still an asshole. Sorry. Number two is a rehash of a different asshole of the week, but mm -hmm. it's still the same asshole of the week. I'm just going to read Musk the headline. Yeah. Um, we don't even need data, but I have it. The headline is... Boeing pleads guilty to fraud and fatal 737 MAX crashes, fined $243.6 million. Pleads guilty asshole, to fraud. The asshole is investors. Yeah. 77% for vote for the CEO and chair, Dave Calhoun. He's been there for 15 years. He's been instrumental in both. He was on the board that greenlit the planes that crashed, and he stayed on the board and been CEO since the crashes. Mm -hmm. That guy is a fraudster. You no just sense. said fraud. Two legally, legally speaking, you are correct. He is. That's the, correct. Yes. He's, he was legally convicted of. Oh. He's pleaded to uh, uh, to fraud under his eighty eight percent and eighty six percent votes for for the two longest tenured directors. Otherwise, and here's the worst part to me: on news that they pled guilty to fraud. And fined $244 million, the stock jumped 2% that day on what? news that they were guilty. Okay. So investors are paying $244 million uh -huh. to the government because Boeing committed fraud. The investors are paying that money. They own the company. The people who made the decisions that cost that money have kept their jobs. They get voted in by those investors. Not only that, their options are worth 2% more after pleading guilty for fraud. Boo. You fucking idiot investors. <laughs> when are you going to realize that the people who run the companies actually matter and you can replace them? Stop yeah. fucking around and vote out idiots like Dave Calhoun. And Don't use your ESG skeptic policy to tell me like this I'm this is like this is too much G for you. There's too much governance for you. Vote them out. They are convicted fraudsters now. Everyone they have forget. the power. Yeah, and let's not forget this very this very simple premise with Dave current CEO and board member Dave Calhoun that we screamed about for many shows is that that you could have he, he wasn't if you had voted him out this year at the 2024 AGM he would still be CEO. You're not you're not disrupting the entire company. You're just taking him off the board. That they couldn't even remove him from the board. That's sad. to me, right? I mean that's beyond me. He, why does he need to sit on an oversight board overseeing himself as he perpetuates fraud? Overseeing I, himself failing. Yes. Right? I, it's cra crazy that shareholders need this to keep happening. And, and we've been saying this on this show since 2019. We've had data showing how connected this board is. We've shown poor performance for the entire board. There's, nothing, there's no stone left unturned by free float about Boeing at this point when it comes to who's governing this company. And yet, you shouldn't need the data at all to say a guy convicted of fraud should not be your representative to run the company. 
That's what the takeaway that should be here that simple. Is Americans need to learn how to vote. <laughs> It's yes. unbelievable that you don't get, in fact, in a quarter of American companies by free float data, more than uh, 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 more, slightly more than a quarter of American companies are actually totalitarian. One person controls the majority of the power or influence, either through dual class shares or shareholdings that they have or family or connections on the board, any number of ways you can sort of maintain control of a company. That means you only really get to vote at 75 percent of the companies that you might own because it doesn't matter at the other 25% really at all. So exercise that vote, you morons. You should not 77% agree that a fraudster should stay there. You shouldn't agree on that. All right, that's the end of that rant. Um, and <laughs> I then don't finally, think it is for today's show. For today. <laughs> and then finally, um, another one with no data. This, is, this guy's just an asshole. Uh-huh. The asshole is Robbie me. Starbuck. Oh, phew. I thought it was going to be me. Is that yeah. a real name? If you don't know who Robbie Starbuck I is... Don't. It's a terrible name. You, you, would, you might recognize some of the music videos that he actually um, like what? produced and directed. He was a director for music videos. He did it from like 2010 to 2017 or okay. so, 2013 or so, something like that. Um, but he did like Machine Gun Kelly, uh -huh. a band okay. Metric. He did, he did, there were some bands that I recognized on there. Um, or groups that I recognize. Here's a headline. Harley Davidson sparks boycott call for going, quote, totally woke. <laughs> yeah, Harley Davidson. That's okay. right. I shouldn't laugh. How? How? How did they go totally woke? Yeah, how? Do Robbie we have Starbuck is a conservative activist, increasingly an investment activist, who is behind Deer Company and Tractor Supply retracting their DEI commitments. Mm -hmm. okay. And now he's targeting Harley Davidson. Apparently, everyone can just be Vivek now. They can just be a fucking blowhard and say some stuff, and people are listening to them because he he edited Machine Gun Kelly's like music video. I don't even. He has no credibility. He ran for a Tennessee senatorial position and lost. So he has money. He doesn't have a lot of money. Enough. He's just a fucking blowhard. And well, credit a where credit is blowhard. due. Yeah. Um, he is actually targeting brands that are typically used by rural and rural adjacent white people, right? Like mm -hmm. Deer, Harley Davidson, Tractor he's Supply. He's stoking hate to get these okay. companies to so listen to So he's figured out, he's, like... He knows where to start. Uh -huh. The base is groups of lar large groups of white people who buy from companies that deal mostly with them. Any one of them that has a diversity officer, a DEI commitment, says anything Bud about Light inclusion, yeah. he's going after them and saying, your customers don't want this. Effectively, mm -hmm. he's telling these companies, your customers are all white racists. They don't <laughs> want any oh, of this bullshit. Man. And they're listening because to of him. The, because of Bud Light. Because of Bud Light, because of right. Target. That's why they're listening. That's why they're listening. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris is the nominee. She raised $150 million in three days by a country that might actually be less racist than you think. <laughs> Robbie Starbuck, you are just a fucking turd. Just yeah. stop it. Just <laughs> yes. stop it. Kamala's have you heard of this? will fix all of this. <laughs> Chantal, have you heard of Robbie Starbuck? Nope, not before today. Okay. Never. Good. That's good. See, there's uh, good well, news, Matt. He's a he conservative influencer and mm -hmm. an idiot, right? Like, I don't yeah. know. Like, he's he exists in one bubble. But what he's doing is effectively changing companies. Wow. And that is the amazing part. Because we here have been trying to use data to let, like, investors change companies with information. He just says, where are white people at? And who's got a DEI policy? I'm going to say all the white people are racist. Actually... If you're a white person living in rural America mm -hmm. and you're not a racist, you should get really angry at this. Yeah. Because they're calling you. He's racist. using you to change the way companies work. It doesn't reflect what you think. So those are my assholes. You've got oh. anyone staying in Florida, investors Ooh. and Robbie Starbuck. Wow. Wait, investors at Boeing. At Boeing, yeah. yeah. Damien, and you Robbie start. Starbuck. Oh man. <laughs> I I mean, just to keep it simple. I, I got to go with Robbie Starbuck. I mean, he's just... I, 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 That's a very I, pure asshole. It's like a, a guy who's an asshole. Darn. It's, a, it, it's also just a, it's a shameful... It's a, sh it's a shameful campaign. I mean, the and, and and attacking... They're already attacking Kamala for either, either being black or being a woman or, you know, they're, they're 
referring to her as a DEI hire, which is you know absolutely ludicrous. Uh, uh, it's just uh, it's just to find him to be a shameful schmuck, an asshole, real good I, asshole. Yeah, I agree. The single right. standalone asshole this week. Made it easy. Chantal, sure. what would your vote been? I'm gonna say Boeing. I say the investor Ooh, needs yeah. to learn how to vote. Yes, I I agree with Chantal's Chantal. only Chantal saying is that. Correct. Chantal is correct. I'm not saying Chantal is wrong. But Chantel has not been on the show like Ari and I have to hear the 75 <laughs> other rants against <laughs> Boeing that Matt's already done. Yeah, so this, we're just tired of it. Starbucks hey, guy, that's podcast. refreshing. Starbucks is refreshing. <laughs> it's refreshing to hear about a different asshole. It made me want some lemonade from Starbucks. How can right. we... Uh, my question is this, as you play us out of that. How can we be the, the Robbie Starbuck on our side of things? How can we how can we achieve Robbie Starbuckism from the free flow perspective? If anyone That's has an question. idea, let me know. All right, move on. Okay. Oh, I hate, I hate, I hate Chantal, you're fired. It's going to be me eating a cookie, Chantal. All right, what else? What's, do what is it? you guys have your headliniest? headliniest? Ooh, headliniest. I do. I have one. I, have I one. did not see any. I have one. I have two. I you can choose one of mine. All right. Damien, you start. I'm starting because mine made me laugh. And I know this is really nerdy and stupid, and nobody cares about this but me. But I just thought the headline was funny as a concept. Okay, so bear with me. This is a bit of a theoretical idea here. The headline is Terex, Terex Corporation, to acquire ESG for $2 billion. (laughs) Like what No, okay. (laughs) I know that ESG actually stands for, uh, it's a a company called Environmental Solutions Group. But I just thought it was funny, the idea of a company buying ESG, right? The, The, and that's what's valued at, $2 billion. When I read that headline, (laughs) I fast read it as Texas to acquire Uh, ESG (laughs) for $2 billion. Uh, that's what Apple used to do. Apple used to buy some of my like some great like products. Like I remember they bought a music app I used to love called Groove Shark. I think just to kill it. Yeah. They didn't even do anything with it. They just bought it because they couldn't compete with it. It was better coding than they could come up with. They just bought it to kill it. So that would be great if Texas bought, bought ESG you. just to kill it. <laughs> that's my right. stupid. Headline. Sorry, you go next. Pick the oh, one. Oh, I think this is so funny. I'm so glad I found it. <laughs> <laughs> Champagne sales sales down worldwide in 2024. Industry executives cite lack of cheer. Oh, <laughs> that's sad. sad. That's well, the saddest. It's changing headline. now, though, right? You know, like imagine that. Imagine that earnings call. Uh, like our reporting sales are down 2.3 percent uh, this year. Really, we think uh, the the uh, headwind here is a uh, lack of joy and cheer, <laughs> right? Like it's not us. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, it's the Prosecco. It's the people. <laughs> There's been a real move to different alcohols yeah. that bring on depression. Some We're hard <laughs> al- bottom shelf stuff. <laughs> that is a good one, Matt. Yours right. is easy. Matt, yours is the winner. I gotta say. Um, here's mine. Um, mostly because the context of it after this is but it's the, fabulous. But the, just the pure headline itself to me <laughs> is like, it's just amazing. The headline is, can boneless wings include bones? High court weighs in. <laughs> I just love the idea of, the, of, of any Supreme Court weighing in on that idea. Like that concept, yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, it not only did the court weigh in, it was divided in a four to three opinion by Ohio's Supreme Court. The Supreme <laughs> yeah. Court in Ohio, they found that consumers should not expect boneless wings to be free of bones. Hmm. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. In a not four to three decision, they should say it again. They they said boneless wings <laughs> should not be expected to have no bones in them. What? So boneless wings can have bones. They found that the, Why? the Ohio Supreme Court said boneless wings might have bones. Wait, they I said a boneless that, wing is like a is like a nugget or tender. What is a boneless well, wing? Well, after so a, a guest at a restaurant basically got a bone stuck in his throat from a boneless wing. And he sued. Like, and he can't ah. sue for that. He sued. It went all the way to the Ohio and Supreme Court. And they threw Court, it out. Who, in a split decision, decided that boneless wings what? can indeed have bones in them. That's bananas. Thus not making them boneless. And these Doesn't are the that same... make the headline even better? Not so only are we the asking same... the question, but it's so dumb, the answer is the opposite of what you <laughs> would think. But these are the same red state Supreme Courts that they are throwing out like DEI committees, but yet boneless wings can have bones. Well, they can. That's they silly. can. Because no they can't discriminate against bones. Yeah. All right, winners. The, the wait. The, who won the headliniest? Uh, 
definitely the bones. Yeah, the bones, right? Bones. I'm voting for That's mine. Ridiculous. I like the idea of Terex buying ESG. I like this one. The I bones like won. You lost. All right. All right. That means we are on winners. Let's get out of the show. It's going in these third hour. It's a long one I today. I my winner first. Everybody else, coffee drink. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have the same winner as anyone else. All right, Damien. How could we all? Have, how could there be any winner other than Kamala Harris and or just the country? I don't know how we have another yeah. winner other than that. That's my winner. I really like that she uh, broke the fundraising record for 24 hours in U.S. history with 81 million dollars. How can we raise that much in 24 hours? Which can means we do that? Have way too much money. Well, Chantal, you had a slightly different winner. Mm-hmm. The Democratic oh, Party. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. whole party. We so. Yeah. All yeah, we should all get ready for not only um, a really great candidacy, a really great campaign, but also some prime time entertainment because Harris is ready to oh. debate. Ooh. Mm, I still hopefully don't watch TikTok. that. I will, but I don't want to see that. I think it'll be a little cringy. Yeah, it's going to be right. definitely it's cringy. Your winner. Um, my winner was climate change. Oh. Because, okay. look, if you think about it, yes, Kamala Harris broke single day fundraising mm-hmm. in history. Mm-hmm. But climate change broke the highest temperature record ever recorded, uh-huh. and yep. then the next day broke it again. Oh, climate change not, is a very big not, winner this think, week. Is that I because don't like the, that. is that the, because the money she raised was through like Bitcoin and all the Bitcoin <laughs> farm servers were going crazy? Is that I why? Did, I didn't say, but I do think okay. climate change is, ends up the big winner this week. Predictions. Predictions. I don't have a prediction this week. What mine? No. Lazy. Is that I think Kamala is going to start to win the hearts of not voters. I mean, I think she'll do that too. But but CEOs, I think we're going to start to see some CEOs coming over CEO to Kamala. Love for Kamala. Yeah. yeah, I think we're going to see some CEO love. No, I think we CEO will. Love. I think that's a boring prediction. <laughs> so Chantal, what? Make a better prediction. I, I just wanted to think of something else with Kamala. That's that's all. <laughs> Chantal, I want what's an your old prediction? candidate to donate to Kamala. You know, he just. I'm saying Bloomberg is going to give some of his massive Wait. millions of dollars to Kamala. Wait, know, Chantal, it, didn't you have a Bloomberg prediction? Didn't you have a Bloomberg story or prediction last time too? <laughs> Maybe she has some insight. Yeah, what's going on? You're trying to get a job at Bloomberg, right? <laughs> I think that was <laughs> <laughs> Hey, my mom already. No, I think that was you, Chantal. Work. Chantal's just. Uh-huh. I don't try Chantal anymore. <laughs> This is product placement. I think Chantal is. She's pl- yeah, this is this is product placement. <laughs> she's she. They're like, this is how you get a job as a young. That's person. true. That is true. So, yes. uh, congrats to Chantal for getting a job. At Who Bloomberg. will be working either at Bloomberg or TikTok when she graduates? College. <laughs> <laughs> My prediction is Kamala's win in Ooh, November. I like this already. Sparks. So, yeah. I'm not predicting that Kamala is winning in November. She's winning in November. Oh. Wait, Her what? win in November sparks a sudden slate of female, black female CEOs at Fortune 500 or, companies. Or Indian, right? She's half Indian. I predict that at least three new black female CEOs wow. are announced in 2025. Wow. Unfortunately, that's a huge number for that universe. That's a huge a monstrous number. number. <laughs> that's a monster number. That's all we got. That is Ari the Data Queen, Chantal the Intern. That's Hazel Mount Rollis, I'm your analyst, Matt Muscardi. We are Free Float. Come back next week when I think we're actually all here all week for the yep. first time this summer. Um, we're going to do that. Oh, no. Ari, I don't have child care. Uh, Ari's not here. <laughs> next week. <laughs> nice um, try. No. <laughs> so not quite. But come back next week. We'll talk to you on Tuesday and maybe Thursday and maybe Friday. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.